Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fearless Franco. The game plays three to four players, uh, ideally, however, it does play one to nine players. And it takes about, oh, I don't know, two hours if Franco is good and 15 minutes if Franco sucks. Ages 13 and up. And in the game Fearless Franco, you're playing as either Fearless Franco, his doctor, the mechanic that works on his bike or his car or, you know, his other different vehicles, as well as, of course, his girlfriend and uh, you all are attempting to do different things but in in reality you all want money uh, and and of course glory which you can then bribe Franco in order to get money from him uh, Franco is basically going to be the daredevil stuntman he's going to be attempting devilish tricks uh, feats of great length in attempt to score points uh, net glory and thusly get him paid uh, his objective of course is to go throughout all the seasons of the game and not risk too much bodily injury to himself because if he does too much, his girlfriend will start getting more control, and also uh, he could potentially even die or be forced to retire. And when that happens, everybody's going to tally up their money. The doctor for all the work that he's put into Fearless Franco over the years. Uh, the girlfriend, all the money she's received from child support, as well as booking his gigs and other nefarious things that she can do. And his mechanic, the one who is fixing the damage to his vehicles and upgrading them. And then of course, with the larger player variant, uh, there are going to be people who are betting on the stakes of the the game and basically at the end of the game whoever has the most money by the time he dies or retires is the winner of this stuntman dexterity slash re simultaneous reveal guard game in which you're trying to gain as much money and glory as possible. So here we have a game of Fearless Franco set up for three or more players and the first thing we're going to do is of course set up the game board and I'll explain how that works. Take the main board of the game and place it in the middle of the board so that everybody can see it then go ahead and place all the money in the banking area place the special circle circumstances and jump decks here in the spaces provided make sure that they are shuffled place the time token on the marker for year one on the season as it will go around the track into which a case either fearless franco will be gracefully retiring forcefully retiring or passing on place this little jump tracker uh, next to this area here because you will be placing a jump card on it very shortly and place all damage markers on each of the yellow spaces indicated here for each of the three different vehicles. Then go ahead and give each player a deck of cards. Now in a three player game, you'll be playing with three of these decks here and in a four player, you'll play with all of them. If you play with more, you're going to use this fifth deck. This will allow betting spectators to participate in the game, thusly allowing people to determine how well Franco is going to do. Set up this jump track somewhere separately. You will be changing the difficulty of the track based on it being a piece of cake or it being basically impossible. And and I have it available for players to utilize. I'll just leave it here as set as demanding. You have your two die here, which will be used mostly for your luck checks whenever you're performing a jump as opposed to a skill one like this one is providing. And place your vehicles over here. Every player has starting cards that they'll be able to take, and it'll tell you in the rules what those are. But for instance, uh, Franco here is going to have these three LD cards here in his hand to start the game off with, and his girlfriend will have something like uh, paying for child support for her kid. All of the glory, injury, and damage tokens need to be set aside for players to be able to have in the game, and these SP tokens will be set near as well. And that's pretty much it for the setup of the game. Other than most importantly, determining the difficulty of the game, easy, medium, or hard. Depending on the difficulty, you will increase the amount of money that Franco will get, as well as the potential damage that Franco will have. So when you're playing with an easy game, you're going to get $2,000 extra and one injury to Franco. And how that works is in the base game, you're going to get $400 for Franco, and then uh, you're going to add uh, 2,000 more whenever you have an easy difficulty. So in this case, it's like six grand that Franco is going to start with, as well as one glory. And you can take a glory token from over here, as well as one injury. An injury is rolled with the die, determining based on the number, you'll correspond the damage to the area indicated. In this is case, it's a four to the left arm. Place an injury on that space there. Uh, additionally to the girlfriend will choose two jump cards take two of these guys here pick one of them and then go ahead and place it out onto this space here check the difficulty as well as the season and in this case is going to be here too and we'll place it right there indicated by that little summer area discard the one that you're not using here any completed jump cards will go over here let's now talk about a round of play now that you have the idea of how the game is fully set up round is going to work like this draw one card from your player deck and then 
everyone will simultaneously pick a card from their hand and place it face down so that everybody can see, thusly revealing at the same time. The only time you don't do that is if you have a hold card uh, or a card that says otherwise, in which case you will secretly put it back in front of you. In most cases, the H cards are only going to have one face down card hidden. Those cards typically will be like end of game scoring and whatnot. Uh, others are going to last uh, for the duration of the game. Like for instance, my kid, Franco is going to be giving her money every round. That's how she's going to make income. Uh, the mechanic and doctors will make money similarly. So after you revealed your cards, then you're going to have Panko, Pank, Franco pay. And he's going to generally have to pay costs. Bank will also have to pay, and it'll be based on the wording of those specific cards. The doctor will be able to heal Franco one time, and the mechanic will be able to either upgrade or repair a vehicle one time, and Franco will have to pay them in order to do so. Maybe Franco will want to upgrade his helmet or shocks on the bike. Or maybe Franco had taken damage from his tires last round, in which case he can pay the doctor to remove that. So that's how they're going to generate their income. And now how Franco generates income is in the next phase, which is the jump. So after this round tracker moves to the next one, you'll go through all those phases again with the additional aspect of the hand limit being only one card. And then once you hit the third round or whatever round it might be based on the jump card, you'll attempt to perform a jump. And the way jump works is pretty simple. If Franco has one or less injuries, Franco decides the jump. If he has more, the girlfriend decides the jump. There are two jumps. Jump one is a skill jump. You'll be utilizing the vehicle indicated on the card and the difficulty indicated as well, placing this little jump tracker based on the difficulty next to the jump track. Place this little guy here, hold this, and shoot this thing all the way across, hopefully landing in one of the better locations. However, if you don't go that way and you want to go with the luck way, Franco will roll the die and then it'll determine it based on the track here. If the d d jump was demanding and you rolled a three, that would be a bad jump. However, if it was something like, oh, I don't know, a six, that would be a great jump and it would be a demanding track, you would score additional points. Franco always scores the payout, no matter what. Doesn't matter if he does poorly or it doesn't matter if he does well. You're going to get two glory and $4,500 as Franco. However, if you succeed, you're going to get more additional currency. If you fail, you're going to take damage to either your vehicle and or your personal well-being. And in this case here, we can look at this track. This will show the amount of damage that Franco is going to take, which is going to be indicated by rolling this die here, just like we did at the beginning of the game, and placing down a marker. Markers on this track here can stack. And if two many stack at the end of a jump, he can either be forcefully retired or even die. However, um, if he uh, if he doesn't take damage, he might take a vehicle damage, in which case the mechanic would roll the die and determine the number based on the vehicle and place a damage marker on that area. Then we can check over here, which is the amount of extra money the player can get. And then, the, of course, the extra glory the Franco player can get. So succeeding those jumps is going to be beneficial for Franco and for other players because they're going to need to mooch off of him at the end of every jump. And that's pretty much the idea of how the jumps work. There's a couple little things like when you land in these areas here, if you land upside down and you're straddling between good and evil, or good and so-so, I should say, then backwards means so-so and frontwards means good. You'll always take the better uh, choice when straddling whenever he's face up and always the worst one when face down. Uh, the op opportunity for whether Franco chooses or his girlfriend cho chooses will change based on their needs throughout the game. And that's pretty pretty much it. This time tracker is going to go all the way around the board, and if he successfully survives through all the way, he'll gracefully retire, getting him extra glory. If he's forced to retire or die, that will instantly end the game after a jump. If a jump is successfully succeeded, of course, like I said, she'll go ahead and choose two new ones, place the new one up, choose the new area in which the new season is going to start, and the game will proceed as normal by drawing a card, revealing a card, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much it. That's how you play the game. There's the little things like upgrades that will help you take less damage or less injury, and each of them are going to be associated by the different cars and the different bikes and this, the planes. And if you score the most money at the end of the game, you will win. Now, another little thing to note, too, is you can bribe each other with currency, especially if certain players gain glory. They'll want to give that over to Franco, maybe charge him a certain amount in order to take that, or take and give him that glory. And of course, if Franco ever runs out of money, there's certain things that can happen. And of course, when the end of the game rolls by, Franco's inheritance is going to be what is left of the end of the game, which will determine who has money. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about my review of the game uh, Fearless Franco and whether or not you guys want to pick this one up. Currently, link down below in the description.
So the first thing I want to touch on with this game is the story element to it. Now, of course, yes, this is a dexterity game, which is going to be utilizing uh, Franco to be flinging your little vehicles across a mat, hoping to land in specific areas or roll in the die in hopes that L Lady Luck is on your side. But what is also interesting about this game, too, is that each of the different decks are going to correspond with the different players and how they inter interweave with each other. It's not just like Franco is the one that's always constantly giving money out and he's the one that every everyone is focusing on, so it's not like a one versus many. Uh, this, in fact, has a lot of interesting things. I'll talk about a couple of the cards here. Like, the doctor's ambulance might need repairs, and so in which case the mechanic might get some money. Or perhaps, like, there's the workman's comp scam. The Franco's lawyer has me sign some paperwork, takes $500 from Franco, and then I have to heal one injury. Uh, broken adding machine. A, lo a, lo a lot of overhead on this job. Franco must pay double this turn for any repairs or upgrades. And so, the doctor basically, a uh, mechanic basically, has the ability to kind of uh, change the game for different players and how they work. Uh, maybe the doctor wants to actually make sure that Franco successfully retires, and if he does, he's going to get bonus money, and so cards that they can choose to save or play throughout the game can change how they feel about Franco's surroundings. Maybe the girlfriend is out to get him and so wants to make him take injuries, uh, or, or, or perhaps actually she needs him in order to score money because she's the one that's getting him gigs and booking him stuff, and she makes money if he has money. If he has not have any money, it's we're in trouble here. Uh, um, I guess things like my uncle. My uncle asked if he could help out, allow the mechanic an extra repair or upgrade this turn if Franco pays. So maybe she wants him to repair the vehicles better. Uh, school starts next week. Take $500 from Franco for every LD child card that you have. So this, this is fairly useful, right? If you have a bunch of LD child cards, you're going to need to uh, take some money from Franco. So maybe having him actually earn money is going to be beneficial. Um, Holy Grail, this one here is, and I can't even spell Apothecary, fully heal a body part of your choice for free. So, you know, Franco gets some, some lucky cards as well. And so these cards are going to be utilized throughout the game, whether they're benefiting yourself or uh, kind of helping Franco in some way or hurting him in some way. They, these kind of all intertwine with each other and they play a role because each one of them has a unique story attached to them and you start to get the feel of how the characters feel about each other. It's not just uh, it, it's not just as cut and dry as you might think it might be. Um, uh, also, of course, there's the three different types of vehicles and how you choose to utilize them and what damage they have. That makes a big difference. Whether Franco is less injured might be beneficial when they choose the specific jump card or the girlfriend. Uh, you kind of the whims and woes of each of the players will determine how these jumps are going to go and whether the skill is going to be involved or not. If a Franco is particularly lucky, then you might want to have them go for skill or or vice versa. Another thing about this game too is you are constantly having to uh, make this flow work. You can't const you can't have one player getting too far ahead, and so players might kind of work together at certain instances to mess with one player in order to better themselves, or even, like, uh, bribe, right? Maybe, uh, for instance, Franco's the one that needs the glory, and maybe the girlfriend's got the glory, but she can't utilize it, so she needs to get some money for this glory that she can use for the end of the game. Uh, all this kind of stuff plays a role in the game. The game is colorful and very bright, vibrant. This is a prototype copy uh, or, or this is a copy from the Game Crafter. You can look to see in the link down below where you can pick up this game here. Um, and uh, of course, the artwork is very vivid, beautiful. I actually really, really enjoy the backs of the cards here. All these little cards here representing the different players' decks. The fact that more players can join in by just jump it, simply jumping in, doing the betting if they want. They don't have to actually go in uh, for the full game, specifically for those like beginning gateway style players. They can just participate in just the betting as opposed to everything else that this game uh, has the possibility for you to be able to enjoy. Um, another thing to note too is my, if I gave this game to my graphic designer, I'm sure he would start going like changing different things. He'd want to see certain things fixed um, on the graphic design. I'm not a graphic designer, so I wouldn't begin to know how to how to, how to mess with certain things. But uh, there's certain things like, for instance, the uh, text is a little harder to read on some of them. There's a bunch of different fonts in the game, which I understand why they're doing it, but it can be a little more difficult for people to read. And to make things a little easier to read, it would probably be beneficial. Uh, something like the track for the jump card. It says two seasons, but it doesn't really specify that you place the actual jump card in that tracker there so it took me a bit I had to go and look it up to make sure I was doing it correctly and uh, 
there's just like those little baby instances in the rules. So editing was definitely going to help them as well as even, even saying things like placing these markers on the score track at the beginning of the game or right next to it is just things that are going to be helpful so the players will, will know to do this thing. Uh, but otherwise, overall a very enjoyable game. This game has got some funny, hectic situations. There is a bunch of different random events that are going to occur. Uh, special circumstances are going to come for each jump, which is definitely going to basically have some zany thing happen. Like uh, they say we should replace the old crack supporting poles, adjust the jump landing one space better. So you can change the way the jump track has gone even after the jump card is done. Real, cram real camera crews from a real network, if, if, if you fail, uh, if uh, fall, jump plus one glory to jump payout. So during fall, you'll get a bonus uh, of, of an extra glory as Franco. So yeah, these, these things can change the game in certain ways. Uh, the, the money, I actually like the paper money. It's not actually really paper money. They are actually little thicker pieces and they use, you are utilized pretty well. Uh, but of course, for me personally, I always prefer uh, chits or tokens as opposed to money just because they can get damaged or they can bend or break and that kind of thing. But this one's definitely better than Monopoly money, in my opinion. Uh, overall though, a fun enjoyable game. This is what I played with my family. This is what I played with my younger cousins and they love to see Franco get messed up. And in this case, I was Franco for the most part because I was also explaining the game and he, he involves with the, the skill checks and whatnot. But of course, each character kind of feels different in their own way, attempting to have different uh, goals in mind. And when you play the game in a different way, you get to experience it in a different way as well, which is nice. If you're interested in picking up the game, Fearless Franco, now one unique theme I've, I've never seen it before, which is really cool stuntman game uh, with actually utilizing dexterity and card placement and of course simultaneously revealing it's pretty cool take a look down below link in the description where you can pick it up all right guys thank you so much for watching outro time Appreciate you guys watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fearless Franco. If you're interested in picking the game, like I said, link down below in the description. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell button. Greatly help us out here. Check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Tons of stuff that you can go ahead and take a look at and check out even more reviews on the website that are different than even the ones here on YouTube. Join our Discord, join our Patreon if you're interested. And of course, the big thing right now, Moonshell, a mermaid game my wife's designing. It'll be out March 2nd, available Kickstarter for you guys to go ahead and uh, enjoy your backing pleasure. One to four player puzzle game in which you'll be placing and pulling different shells and placing onto your mermaid boards and scoring different patterns and whatnot. Uh, think of a puzzle game that is met with something like a, a Tetris style feel and a match three game. If you like that kind of stuff, uh, you're going to enjoy this one. It has the very relaxed, easy mode style of the game, which is gateway, easy for everybody, and then even more complex for a deeper uh, sort of experience for more modern gamers. Regardless, though, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know what you think about this game here, Fearless Franco, and whether you want to pick this up or what you have any questions, I'm going to answer them down below. Appreciate you guys watching. And as always, I look forward to doing a daring and uh, devious nature stunt. No, I, w I probably wouldn't do that. I'm already, my back is already, it's, it's really hurting actually. Like my back, I hurt my back a couple years ago and it's, it's never really, really gotten better. So I, I won't be doing a stunt, but I will see you next time.